I love your presence, everybody. Welcome to the Football Ramble. Lopetegui's left, David Ray has arrived, and Kevin De Bruyne is angry. It's Wednesday, 9th of August. I'm Marcus Speller. I'm Eddie Russell. And I'm Pete Donaldson. Hey, welcome one and all. It's welcome back, baby. Marcus. Thanks, Bravnik. Hey. Oi, 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 oi. How was your um, little summer break? Oh, it was all right. It was all right, We got it? through it. We got <laughs> and we're back <laughs> for yeah. the football. For you crying mean out we, loud. the listenership, got through it? I we, think... the listenership, did get through it with a lot of support yeah. th- for each other. No thanks to you. Well, I was more thinking that I'm a public figure and I belong to the public, Andy. So yes. everything yeah. I do, they sort of do yes. through sort of proxy, don't they? Yes. Um, so I do a little did, Marcus yeah. Speller communion and eat a bit of your body every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> little, little, little cracker. <laughs> <laughs> I to, I'm not calling you a little cracker. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm for a change. I, I'm saying I eat no, a little No, he melts cracker. on the tongue, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he really does. Uh. A little Farley's Rusk with Marcus's first drawn on it. There we are, you see. Uh, well, um, it is a new season. And that means on the continent is back, Andy. It does. What on earth are you doing here? You should be doing that. <laughs> well, my goodness, you can I'm do I'm in both. the studio early for it. How about that, everybody? We're lucky to have you here. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise it would just be myself and quite an ill Pete Donaldson, he's as put- the <laughs> listeners have probably figured out already. He's putting, he's putting down the croissant. Yes. <laughs> and picking up some Rice Krispies. <laughs> picking up the cream, the custard cream. Yes. Uh, well, of course, this year um, on the continent is on its own brand new feed. Uh, Andy's requests were heard. Uh, he had his. <laughs> I need room. And he, well, he. I need some goddamn space. He wanted some separation. Yeah, really. Bre- Brexit means Brexit. Brexit. And, uh, yeah. Indeed, this is your equivalent. <laughs> uh, and uh, tomorrow you will be joined by Dotton and Nikki Bandini for the first episode of the season. Then on Friday they'll be back for Ask OTC to answer all your burning questions about European football. Um, so hit the link in the show description or search on the continent and subscribe now. Um, gentlemen, as we speak. Julian Lopetegui might be back on the continent because uh, he's yeah. left Wolves. Uh, it was announced last night that uh, that he and uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers have agreed to part ways. If he is back on the continent, oh, that was quick. <laughs> that was <laughs> quick, wasn't it? Barely enough time. Get Barely the red time. eye out of there. <laughs> he, he'd probably taken a plane rather than swum. Uh, yeah, it was a long... Yeah. Sort of... His his yearly pass for the um, fast track at Luton is probably still because he was only there for like nine months, wasn't he? So it's still probably East Midlands. Oh, I don't know where he. Where else would he? I mean, from Luton to Luton to Spain is a pretty. I'm talking about Wolverhampton. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. East Midlands Airport. I reckon so. Is there a West Midlands Airport? Birmingham Uh, to Madrid. Maybe, yeah, but fair. Fair. and hopefully, unlike Luton, you don't have to f- fiddle and try and find a pound coin so you can get those three little uh, bags bags in the ball in the little yeah, uh, gadget ball machines. Yeah, yeah. shocking behaviour, isn't it? <laughs> What's your airport of choice, Peter? You're a man who likes. to I'm fly a South around. End man. Of course, South End on London South End. The, the, you can see the coast as you arrive. <laughs> people are very. I can see my house when I arrive. The, yeah. the, the, the planes come in so very low, Marcus. Yeah, when I'm in the garden, going, oh, it shouldn't be in the nude. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's unwell. He's been hit by a plane. <laughs> they, were dumping, the they were dumping some fuel on, onto me. <laughs> yeah, let, let, let's try and cover him up. Um, well, yeah, but Lopetegui said he was unhappy with the lack of investment in this summer at the club. And uh, and he's gone. I mean, it comes after Wolves chairman uh, Jeff Shee penned an open letter to fans explaining that financial fair play is affecting their ability to invest in the squad this summer. Interesting. Uh, well, we we got a tweet from St- or an X from Steve, should we say? Yeah, still it's not older. Twitter anymore. It's X. Okay, it's it's some of the finest rebranding. <laughs> Can you not respect IP? <laughs> respect the wishes of a CEO. Respect the wishes. He's protecting us all. Look, can, it, can we respect the wishes of me not to have X by DMX put in my head every <laughs> three seconds? <laughs> X gonna give it to you, Andy. Yes, I could um, probably do that voice today. Yeah, I was gonna X say. Gonna give it to you. Nice, but this is. I mean, look. If the musketeer wants to change it to X, Andy, yeah. then it's X. Okay? okay, fair. So there we are. But anyway, we got a tweet from Steve. Uh, and he said, got to admire the advanced financial thinking that goes from money so tight, our manager is publicly angry and the chairman's made a statement about it to spend more money paying off the two remaining years on his contract and hiring someone else. <laughs> it's quite a remarkable situation at Wolverhampton Wanderers, Andy Brassel. Right. The season is about to start. I officially opened it the other day. Yes, you did. Um, and then suddenly this. Money so tight, our manager is publicly angry and the chairman's made a statement about it. Worst Simply Red song <laughs> ever. <laughs> what is going on? Why are they doing this so late? It, it all sounds a bit leicester to me, doesn't right. it? You know, last well, Spanish season, national team. Where, where Leicester are in 
you know, a, a place where they've obviously he's better than Wolves, where they've um, come quite close to Champions League. They've won an FA Cup yeah. a couple of seasons, and then it's just oh, we're just going to have a fallow season. You can't do that in in the mm. Premier League. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about this before we came on air, Marcus, and um, I was saying, are, are we back in Wolves for the drop now? And you were saying. Well, it's a bit early. I think that's the thing. This is the sort of thing that could take you by surprise, isn't it? Mm. Wolves, you look at them, good players, and then all of a sudden, are they dropping themselves in this position where mm. they could they could be in a in a relegation battle? Especially when the coach decides, unlike Brendan Rodgers, mm. that you know, first two, maybe it's unsustainable. First two matches, Man United and Brighton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, like it's, it's not great, is it? I, I find it. I find it quite incredible. I mean, that, that this has happened. I mean, but it's not the first time. In the time something like this happened to Lopetegui because the Spain national team mm. in the, the World Cup. He got binned off. I mean, that was because he was accepted the job at Real Madrid. Yeah, I mean, they, <laughs> they do it. he did publicly disgrace himself and they did shit can him <laughs> very publicly. Is he going to turn up at it's Real Madrid, different. you think? And he goes, hey, do you remember that routine we used to do? <laughs> 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 no, there's not a job for you here. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, if you're a Wolves fan, you've got to be rather confused or quite pissed off, to be quite frank. And um, a, little, a little bit worried. If, if your only signing has been to bring back Gary Doherty. <laughs> yeah, well, they've gone oh, in. The Gary Doherty, that would be really bad. He's like 55 now. Yeah. Matt Doherty. <laughs> Matt Doherty yeah. would be the preferred. That Doherty. was so difficult that your, your throat closed up. You're like, <laughs> you're either way, it's, te- it's terrible business. <laughs> you're already infecting us, Peter, with that, yeah, uh, with that disease of you. Well, they've gone uh, big on the Garys, though, because uh, they've reportedly <laughs> approached uh, Gary O'Neill over the prospect of replacing Lopetegui. And I love this was an article. Uh, this, is, this is a snippet from one of the articles that was talking about this. O'Neill is understood. This was last night. Yeah. O'Neill is understood to be abroad, right? But he's primed to take over, isn't expected to be in the dugout when Wolves begin their season at Manchester United on Monday. Don't worry. We think you'll be there. <laughs> we're, we're, not, we're not exactly sure. We've had a conversation <laughs> and he said, ah, if I fancy it. He's understood <laughs> to be abroad. We run it. We, we rung his phone. We think it yeah. was a foreign dialing. Can, we, can we put a taxi on for you? <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. I'll get the train. No, no, no. Is, is it like a WhatsApp where it's, it sounds good, yeah. but it's not like, you know, explicit agreement? They haven't spoken to him, have they? Left you on red. Where, where, are you, where are you now, Gary? I can hear, like, wild animals in the background. <laughs> ah, don't worry. Is that Bournemouth? It's, stra- it's very strange. And to be honest with you, is that not a bit of an underwhelming appointment? Because he was sacked by Bournemouth in the summer, having done a pretty good job last season, I all think things that, considered. I think that's the, the, the clause that sells it to me, having done a pretty good job last season, mm. in a very difficult situation. And there's... But a very well, specific situation as Yeah, well. but there's a lot to suggest. I, I know he knew Bournemouth as a club, etc. There's a lot to suggest that um, in a difficult situation, he, he could do a pretty good job. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be unhappy with this. I'm not if, sure. If he's, I, a, if he's a gaviscon for me. He's just, everyone's just a bit angry and confused. Yeah. He turns up and just <laughs> levels everyone out. So you th- I think he's quite a calm presence. <laughs> when you say levels everyone out. Yeah, do not you, punches them out. <laughs> not knocks them all out. Get, who's, who are the dissenters, right? Um, I, well, OK. I suppose then the, the, the situation at Wolves, parallels could be drawn as to what happened at Bournemouth when he took over there. However, I'm always not... Sh- when you get managers, and they, they're usually English, yeah. who kind of take over the, the sort of classic interim or caretaker manager, who then does quite a good job despite the, you know, in spite of the circumstances, and then is given it full time... Doesn't often work out that well. Yeah, yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. And so Very Shakespeare sort of business. is is a, is, a, is a good example. Yeah, you know. Um, and I know you like to quote Shakespeare often, then, <laughs> but uh, but he wasn't in the job long. But O'Neill here, look, it, it, it it's a tough old gig, and he doesn't speak Portuguese. <laughs> I assume <laughs> I could be doing Gary a disservice there. Yeah, I, I think. I, I guess if you're looking to be positive for Wolves, and you know they do need to sign, it is a really concerning summer for their supporters. But on the other hand, I guess that the thing that like the repost that the board would have made to Lopetegui when he was asking for more money to be spent, they spent a lot last winter. Yeah. And um, as Tim Spears was saying, I think in the Athletic, who's incredibly well connected there, of course, they overpaid on Matias Cunha, for example, yeah. just to please him. You know, they've got in Pablo Sarabia, someone who's got Champions League experience, mm-hmm. a really good player. You know, I, I think the the concern is that since then, uh, there's no Moutinho, mm-hmm. there's no uh, Ruben Neves. Um, 
okay, Raul is not what he was. Um, although maybe he'll be reborn at Fulham. You, you'll have to keep an eye on that for us, Mark. I will. I, I think in terms of what they've got, the, 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 there seems to be um, a, a very big gap in the, the, the sort of squad that the board think they have mm-hmm. and the sort of squad that Lopetegui thought they had. Because he obviously thought it was, a, <clears throat> it was a bit of a lost cause. And he, he made that pretty clear in, in public as well, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Um, but... Yeah, well, I mean, we'll, we'll we'll see. I mean, look, they've they've not they've not got the worst squad in the Premier League by by a long chalk. They've they've got some really good players there. Yeah, but I mean, they are up up against it before a ball has even been kicked. Yeah, that is true. And I think that that's the true. thing with Gary yeah. O'Neill going in there. Mm. You think, well, he's got pedigree of doing this specific job. But you're all. But if you get him in, no disrespect to Gary O'Neill, if you get him in, looking at his CV and the situation at Wolves, you're basically saying we're in a relegation fight. Yeah, before a ball has even been kicked. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which I find you know quite odd. I mean, will they take any kind of inspiration in the fact that Gary Neal had the so solid crew play at his birthday party earlier this year? <laughs> <laughs> Is that you know? I didn't. Are they still going the so solid crew? How yeah. many of them can they draft a few of them in? There's about forty. Or, or, well, 40 ha- Harvey can play left back, didn't he? He did so very yeah, capably yeah. for uh, FC Wimbledon in the combined counties league. Did he? Yeah, he did. Love that. He's probably what? He's, is he? St- well, how old is he now? Late thirties, early forties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten minutes. He keeps like himself in decent nick if you see him on Instagram. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you see, I, I don't know. I, How I, many members of Sauce Solid Crew are you following on Instagram? <laughs> Every last one of them? All of them. All of them? All of them. <laughs> yeah. uh, I found it interesting that Lopetegui's son, Daniel, who was a performance analyst at the club, who went there, of course, uh, he's also left the club. And that's a bit of a shame for Daniel, is it not? Well, I mean... Oh, come on, Dad, I was on enjoying this. <laughs> I was enjoying being a performance analyst. <laughs> yeah. Where am I going to go now? Was wherever, he any good? Don't wherever, know. wherever I go, son. <laughs> It'd be funny, though, if he stayed. They've given me the option to stay. <laughs> Get on the flight with me. <laughs> All right, we're going to Madrid. Um, well, uh, so Wolverhampton Wanderers, there's concern there, lack of signings, blah, blah, blah. The, mm. si- the, 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 the situation wasn't too dissimilar at West Ham. Yeah. Who, sure. who hadn't signed anybody. But then now they've completed their first summer signing. Um, of the window, they've got Ajax defensive midfielder Edson Alvarez for about thirty-five million pounds. That is presumably to plug that Declan Rice gap that's going to be in their midfield this season. He's a really good player. I think it's a good signing. He's yeah. I, I mean, he's he's not as good on the ball as Rice, which I, I think is the immediate issue. May, yeah, may seem indeed. slightly um, unusual considering that he's come from Ajax. Of course, he was very very close to signing. For Chelsea, mm. um, a little bit um, later in nearly last signed for summer. Dortmund as well. It shows you the, the pedigree of the player that the likes of Chelsea and Dortmund were in for him. Yeah, I mean, he initially rebuffed West Ham because he thought he was going to Dortmund, and then Edin Terzic, their coach, um, decided they'd re-sign em- Emre Can instead, and he was a little bit concerned about him being not that good on the ball as as, as well. Oh, right. But look, he's 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 tough as old boots. He can play centre back as as, as well. <laughs> I, I, I think he's. You're I really think he's trying to appeal to the West Ham fans here. You thought, I've put a bit of downer on there. He's just tough as old boots. He's uh, frequently <laughs> drunk. Like, just really unhelpful. Uh, he, uh, he'll get stuck uh, in. He gets stuck in. Yeah. He, he sets fire to a lot of stuff. He, he plays golf with Julian Dix. You're going to be fine. <laughs> He holidays in Marbella, you know, good signing. Thumbs up. Stayed in Paolo through Trace Villa. Yeah. <laughs> he knows how to get that prime. If your kids want some prime, oh, hey. he's got a mate who knows so, a mate. So they've signed an uncultured defensive midfielder. He <laughs> sounds I'm dreadful. Just Bypass that. him is what you've got to I'm do. Not saying that. That's why they're going in for Harry Maguire. They need a ball player in there, Andy. They need a ball Someone player. bringing the ball out the back. Harry will pass him. Edson, you stay back there. You can play centre half. There we go. It's the West Ham way. It is. There we are. It's, um, it's the it's the children on FIFA way. They stick Harry Maguire up front and uh, oh, do they? Because he's in that, that specific the... challenges and he scores a load of goals. Yeah. Ah, is, that little, is that a little uh, glitch in the system? Yeah. Has Moyes heard about that? Is that why he's trying to get him? That that could be because they don't I... have a striker. They need a striker. Yeah. That, that, that would be the moisiest thing ever, wouldn't it? Playing Harry <sighs> Maguire at centre forward. It's very David James up top, isn't it? Really. Oh, I would I... say. I would say Andy. Um, I would. To be fair, David James was a goalkeeper. Yeah. That's harsh on Harry Maguire. He'd had a he'd had a kit made up though, which is the, <laughs> so fancy. Um, I would say I would love the football ramble to have a little um, cheats and tips section yeah, right. in the video game, like Nam Rude on Bad Influence or uh, uh-huh. uh, Ben the Boffin on uh, the Big Breakfast. Can you Hello, say the 90s. one? I <laughs> oh, was that nineties. 
Yeah. Not even yeah. I've got that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the boffin used to be on Polly Yates's uh, sofa at uh, bed, rather. Yeah. And he used to do the tips. You might need to clarify that because people go, what? <laughs> <laughs> ben the boffin and Polly Yates were having a very long term affair. Oh, okay. Yeah. What about Andy Cap? Was he involved? Andy if we're going to yeah. <laughs> really old Cap. reference it, I mean, that's 80s. Uh, sorry, young people, if you're still there. No. Yeah. <laughs> so we at West Ham, they've got uh, Edson Alvarez. Uh, we think he'll be all right. Um, as long as we, we do. <laughs> yeah, as long as he's just tackling, uh, that should be okay. It's also been reported that West Ham have made a combined bid worth of 50 million boys for Harry <laughs> Maguire and Scott McTominay. Yeah. That, Pete Donaldson, is a lovely old job. It's a smash and grab. It is. McTominay's worth that just by himself. Yeah. Get... Let's not get on to Maguire, but... <laughs> I I'm not having this. I've heard enough of this. I know you're not. You've He's... had enough of this all summer. <laughs> but since you've been away, we've been going in with two feet oh, on Maguire. I know you have. I know you have. <laughs> England's rose. Uh, I think that would be... Man United, just sell him. You just want rid of him. him. You, you've got, you've got. What are they? What did they offer? That well, there's a combined bid there. They've got just surely, just let him. And after that wage rise, just to get him off the wage. Actually, bill. do you know what? Yeah, As surely. I haven't said that. I think it's Maguire that's not wanting to go, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because yes. he's had an increase. Sorry, I've just remembered that he's had an increase in wages because yeah. they qualified for the Champions League. Yes. And then, and he's a bit like, oh, come on, West Ham, what have you got for me? And they're like, well, Europa League. I don't think he does. He care about well which European competition he played because he played in there before. He? He, he put, well, he either got to the final, yeah. unfinished business. <laughs> he didn't. He only got the silver medal. So yeah, the I, idea I, that Maguire has unfinished <laughs> business with the Europa League. <laughs> A weird that, little quest. That's what I would sell it as if I was David Moyes. Yeah. Hey, you got come you on, got Harry. unfinished business here. You've got unfinished business here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I'm I mean, gonna be in prime and <laughs> for a poon Twixes. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that would be a good deal all round. So get it done, uh, Manchester United and West Ham United. But if they do leave, though, and maybe this is the, this is the, perhaps why they really don't want to leave because they do leave, they shall miss out on the new players' lounge at uh, Old Trafford that Eric Ten Hag has so badly wanted. Um, he's he's desired an era for a little while now where the players could have lunch and relax going through their pre-match preparations and, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, a, a premium hospitality lounge had to be sacrificed for this. Oh. Yeah. Where's Sir Alex going to drink his glass of wine? I'm sure he's got another one. <laughs> um, how would you sacrifice a premium hospitality lounge? Uh, what do you mean? How I would sacrifice it? Yeah. Well, like that pub what burned down. <laughs> <laughs> Did you burn it down? Go, oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Oh, sorry, premium hospitality guys. Oh, Shame. Eric, what are you doing with that? Okay, okay. Uh, but yeah, but apparently Jose Mourinho and Lou Van Hull wanted such a lounge, but didn't get one. It's just everyone wants this lounge. What? So it's just a place for them to hang out. Is yeah. it something that like they have yeah, elsewhere? I, well, so what? So what? Well, what are they not eating? <laughs> well, What's I going on? I don't know, Peter. What? What the the, the 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 routine was for home matches is they'd stay the night in the Lowry Hotel, right, yes, yeah. beforehand, and yeah. then they get the coach to the ground, yeah. Ten Hag said, I don't want to do that anymore. And there was that time when Jose Mourinho, when they walked to the ground, they got off the bus because there was traffic. Yeah. And it's all a bit, you know, so he said to the players, you just get to the ground very early on the on match day. Oh, and yeah, then I, I think somewhere he, to hang out. And right. somewhere where we can just chill and play pool and darts and be a bit like a youth club, I would imagine. <laughs> um, they've got a tuck shop and everything. Push pops. Yes, exactly. Everyone yeah. is off their heads on, on push, push pops, pops <laughs> and chuppa chuck. <laughs> and... <laughs> And, uh, and those and little those little massage chairs you get at the airport. All everything, yeah. whatever you you One want. One euro in there. per go. There you go, uh, for five minutes, yeah. or whatever it is. So so that's what he wanted. But the la last season, the players were given the use of number seven lounge on right. match days, but they had to leave it ninety minutes before kickoff <laughs> because it was used as a hospitality lounge. It's good. It's what you've got going? to worry this about is, your priorities. This is an elite you? club, yeah. apparently. This is ridiculous. Although, if you were, I think that, you see they've sold that wrong. We know business at Manchester United have been piss poor in, in the last however many years. But if you're, um, if that is your hospitality lounge, if you're the, the owners or the occupants of number seven lounge. Who's that, Mark Hughes? No, who's, I Who's seven? Uh, David Beckham, Brian Robson. Beckham, yeah, Robson. Yeah, yeah I'm okay. quite sure it's not their lounge. But, you know, <laughs> um, but would you not say to them, well, just if you turn up a bit early, you can hang out with the players and have you know, yeah. some push pops or whatever. <laughs> exactly. Mm. I, think, I think that would be quite well, good. That, uh, from what I've heard from yeah. various Manchester United 
fans. The dreadful it. company, the players. Is, <laughs> isn't the hospitality offering at Manchester United like famously quite shit at the moment? So yeah, well, why, they, do they, why do they want it yeah, so badly tra- for the players? Can't, can't be as bad as Newcastle sacrificing some old tables for cheese boards. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. It can't that be as far the down as that. Board. Yeah, this, the, the chef just an enterprising chef decided that since they're not going to give us any new cheese boards, I'm going to sacrifice some chairs and tables. That's a disgrace. Yeah, it's, it's like desks, design, yeah. desks out of the press room. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That were sawed up into cheese boards. So what? How do you? You get your cheese then, Andy, because you frequent St. <laughs> James's Park. Do you buy one from he Fulham writes, and take it up? He there? files yeah, all of his copy. It. He files all of his copy on cheese things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is totally different. See, um, it's a, a shame Vish is not here because I once went to Lords to watch the cricket. Yeah, and there was some uh, obviously posh lads, and they were handing around a cheese board, and it was like going around the crowd. Lovely. Yeah, there was a knife on there, and I thought to myself. Mm. It's not the football, is it? <laughs> no, it's really not. A bit of trust there, isn't there? Yeah, bit yeah, of yeah. Trust. I went for the cheddar. Um, <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. Mild cheddar, please. Um, no, extra strong. Come on. A little bit of uh, cathedral. Uh, but, but West Ham, going all the way back to them, um, apparently are closing in, as it was described on James Wall Prowse. Quite terrifying, really. Mm. Well, this is... this is Got to get Julian Dix a job somehow, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> James Ward Prowl. They've got also a King Golfer. <laughs> they've got they've got his house. We've got you surrounded. <laughs> Come with us, Southampton. Come with us, sir. Yeah. Well, now Southampton are out of the Carabao Cup. James Ward Prowse is thinking, you know what that was. Maybe <laughs> I'll go for one. it. I, I need to get into the Europa League or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they're 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 closing. And will David Moyes get his man, Andy? That is the big. Yeah, question. that 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 would be a big power move, wouldn't it? Yeah. From from Moisey getting yeah. a. JWP. Uh-huh. It's a bit, honestly, it's proper sort of good old British stuff. Maguire, McTominay, James Will Prowse. He can hit free <laughs> kicks. What's the it's, matter, Peter? I mean, they, they won a European competition this year. Yeah. Look at who they're trying to sign. I mean, <laughs> I think, but I, th- I think Pete's right. I think <laughs> that for, for Moyes, it's very honest of Moyes to say, we won a European competition, <laughs> but that doesn't define me. <laughs> <laughs> what, what happened in the 38 league games is what defines oh, yeah. me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, it could be quite bad for West Ham um, in that they uh, they have uh, reportedly received a bid from Manchester City for Lucas Paquetá for £70 million. He was such a key player for them last season. In, in the back end of yeah, last season. Yeah, he was poor at the start. Was he, just, he, was, yeah. he, he wasn't particularly quick. He has got good feet, but he didn't play it well at the start. No, he? and in the first part of that season, I, I think there was quite a sense of what the bloody hell am I doing here? Yeah. You know when they took that initial mm. picture of him on the roof of the London Stadium <laughs> and in shot in some mm. of the bits which showed the cameraman behind to give that sort of behind the scenes feel, yeah. there was like that sign that said, danger, weak roof. <laughs> 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 we paid for that. Unbelievable. Do you reckon he'll go? I think he might. City have been interested in him for a long time yeah. as a Bernardo Silva backup. There was, Ooh, th- there was like even, that. even a possibility that he might go to City before he went to West Ham. They were keeping an eye on it, definitely. What, what but West, West Ham, Ham moved a little bit quicker. So uh, it, it, it wouldn't be something way out of left field, put it that way. And okay. what West Ham needs is more money in the bank. Yes. So that everybody knows they've That's got right. money in the bank and really needing <laughs> yeah. players. Is that what is that what Man United are holding out with Harry Maguire? Yeah, we thinking, go, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll uh, yeah. how are you getting on with Lucas Pacata? Has he gone yet? Okay, well we'll talk just when he has. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, forty million. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what they're doing, I don't know. Well, um good on West Ham for finally getting a player in, that's what I say. So we'll have to uh, wait and see what's going on there. Um but they have qualified uh, for the Europa League, of course, by winning the Europa Conference League. Um, but let's take it up another notch because Champions League football is being played right now, ladies and gentlemen. You might have blinked and missed it. You might be unaware. You might just be watching the Women's World Cup and I don't bloody blame you. Um, But yes, the first legs of the Champions League third round qualifying took place last night. And that beautiful team from uh, the Faroe Islands, KL uh, Klasvik, um, have made it all the way there, beating Ferenc Varos and BK Hacken. Now, I've not heard of BK Hacken either, but Ferenc Varos, the Hungarian champions, they Mm. were in the Champions League proper last season yeah. they were playing against Barcelona I mean, they got hammered but still the sports club have been in the Champions League before but it's the first time anyone from the Faroes have got through the group stage so is that right isn't that amazing well yeah, yeah. I think yeah, it, w- it, w- it would be because uh, they, they won last night they beat Molde but they, even the first leg 2-1 yeah. Um, but yeah like I mean BK Hack are the Swedish champions as well so again it's no mean feat yeah. this is this is uh, this is uh, 
Pharaoh tail stuff, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's nice. It's nice. Think, you know, and and of, of course, as Pete was saying, right. whatever happens to them from this point, even if they don't get to the group stages in the Champions League, yeah. they end up in the group stages of a European competition. Yeah. Mm. Because point they, away at they, West Ham, they're guaranteed. <laughs> they're guaranteed <laughs> at least a Conference League group stage space just by being in this round. So even if Mulder were to turn it around and beat them in the away leg. Yeah. Mm. And, and it's incredible. Huge. It's incredible. It is incredible. Yeah. Their goalkeeper They're... played as a centre back <laughs> in the Norwegian fifth tier in April this year. Yeah. So he, it's, it's he just... packed in football yeah. <laughs> and then he came back as a centre back in Norwegian am- amateur football because yeah. he missed it. And and now look at him. Looks, look at him now. It looks very beautiful. They're, they're, uh, it's not like a fishing village, isn't it? Their, uh, their, their town. But um, yeah, 12 years ago, they were in the second tier. Uh-huh. The, best, the best bit is uh, their women's side. Um, they've got a player uh, called Ranva Andreessen. I wrote this fact down last week when we were going to speak about it last week. But yeah, but you concentrate on the better fishmongering better. stuff, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> She's got 406 appearances for, uh, for, for, for sports club Krasvik um, uh, with 551 goals. <laughs> Bloody Nora. Is, that, is yes. that a return or what? That is not too shabby at all. <laughs> that's, that's Cristiano Ronaldo-esque, <laughs> I would say. Bloody hell. Well, let's hope that they can uh, finish the job against Mulder mm. uh, because that would be truly remarkable. Lovely. Right, let's have a quick break. Hutchinson, his first touch isn't great, but he's still going. And it is another penalty for Sligo Rovers. He did catch him, I think, Declan. And an opportunity for Sligo Rovers to take the lead. The shag <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the football ramble, <laughs> everybody. So <laughs> unnecessary language. <laughs> Shagging. <slug. laughs> uh, hello, Ireland. Um, there we are. Right, Peter, what have you got on your screen? I've got a, an email Ooh. from a man called James. Hi team, on Friday's episode, someone referred to Luke Shaw as five foot ten. Actually, according to his Wikipedia page, he is six foot one. I know this off by heart, as I find it so unbelievable that I've been questioning my entire reality ever since I found out. I just thought you should know. <laughs> I appreciate that, James. Yeah. And, and, and it was sort of almost fact. certainly Luke Moore, because Luke Moore is obsessed with people's height because he feels like quite high and mighty. Big heads. Regard. He's yeah. obsessed with the size of people's heads. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you can get in touch uh, with the show at any time, of course. Uh, we're at Football Round on uh, X or Twitter if you prefer you know if you're a more of a marathon rather than a stickers type guy um, this is this is going to trip you up a lot you know, <laughs> just say it Twitter Marcus come on we all know what you mean I, I you know if the musketeers change it then I'm on board call him the musketeer Instagram TikTok and YouTube or you can email us show at footballramble.com um, right let's have some Premier League transfer updates or a little more should we say Arsenal have reportedly agreed a deal with Brentford to sign David Raya. How about that? Competition for Aaron Ramsdale. What do you think, Peter? Is Ramsdale going to buckle under the I mean, pressure <laughs> or is he going to come out swinging? I mean, that word, that, that word competition. Mm. Do you think he is? Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. We had a bit of a chat about this before we came on air and right. uh, the production staff seemed to think that Pete Donaldson was correct, even right. though you weren't here to give that opinion, yeah. um, and, and said that uh, Rye's better than Ramsdale. I'm not Luke, sure. Luke Moore believes that, doesn't he, as well? Yeah, but Andy yeah. Brassel, you are coming out in defence of Aaron Ramsdale in this bout. Yeah, I, I, I like old Ramsdale. Yeah. I just, I just I, I think th- he's got the capacity to be, uh, to let his head rule his heart and his hands a little bit. Right. Which I don't think rare. Well, you think he's got a bit of the Joe Hart twitchiness? Yes. Oh, I think, oh, I think, yeah. I think as all Pickford. good England international keepers should. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. He's right. a bit Pickfordy for me. Yeah. Mm. I think. I think. I mean, comparisons have been made with Pickford, of course. It's obvious, but quite accurate times. I, I, I think Ramsdale is in the process of getting past that. I still think he had a really good season mm-hmm. last mm-hmm. season, and um, I think you have to bear in mind that he's still a he's still a young goalkeeper, not not set in his ways totally. Um, but th- this this is really fascinating for him because if he's got a fight to mm-hmm. keep his place, to stay as, as number one for Arsenal, I mean, presumably his medium-term plan is to supplant Jordan Pickford as the England goalkeeper. You would have thought and so. And how does, how does this change the possibility of that happening, mm. I suppose? Yes, yeah, interesting. Well, I mean, look, I think I always find it interesting when a team go for... Have, to have two goalkeepers that are both number ones. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I always think to myself, is, is either is either that, mm. or you choose one goalkeeper is the undisputed number one, 
and the second one's your break glass in case of emergency, nowhere near good enough to do it on a regular basis. <laughs> it, it, you know, it's, it's one of the two options. I quite like the it? old veteran goalkeeper. Yeah, it Mike was, Cooper or Budgie. Where's Brad Friedel? Hilario. Brad Friedel. Is Mark Schwartz still playing? Hilario, yeah. now you're talking. Carlos Cudicini. What happened to him or Carlo? You see? I th- I'm I'm worried that that's going to happen to one of these players. I mean, because good, you've good got... Good when Newcastle played uh, VRL at the weekend. Lovely to see Pepe Rain in there. Yeah, of course. Lovely stuff. There you go. Um, so I, we 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 shall have to wait and see. I think that it's 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 a fair few quid. They've they've been looking at David Raya for a while. I wonder what that does to um, Ramsdale. Yeah, but you would think that Arteta has a handle on what type of character Ramsdale is, and he clearly thinks this will get the best out of him. Yeah, and we and we shall have to see if he's if he's proved correct. Um, uh, staying in in London and and uh, and goalkeeper transfer news, Chelsea have uh, completed the twenty five million pound signing of Robert Sanchez from Brighton. Which is uh, an interesting one, and you'd ex- it's understandable. Eduardo Mendy, of course, has gone uh, to play in Saudi Arabia. Um, there's always question marks over poor old Kepa, <laughs> uh, and they've gone for for Robert Sanchez. Now, Robert Sanchez, his price has plummeted quite a lot, as it was described in a lot of the papers. They were wanting seventy million for him not that long ago. Now they've mm. gone for twenty five million. Is it this... turns out there's nothing like having a fallout with Roberto De Terbi, well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> so, so how bad has this fallout been? That's what it's been reported as. Because Roberto De Zerbi, they say, is all about the minutia. He plans every single detail mm. on the pitch and gives very little freedom to the players in their play. And Sanchez wanted a bit more, and they fell out. How much freedom out. can you have from there? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> how much freedom can you have when you're not in the first team anymore, I suppose? <laughs> well, there's that as well, Andy. A lot yeah. more freedom, you'd imagine. Well, yeah, is, maybe. He, is he going to get much more freedom at Chelsea under Pochettino? I mean, it's it's a little that bit... That guy's got of... bigger issues. <laughs> 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 that guy's got a few other alligators to hit <laughs> from the boat. <laughs> is that what Sanchez is counting on? <laughs> is he thought to Pochettino, Pochettino's gone... Look, you save the shots. Just yeah, get on with it. Save all right? shots. I don't care. <laughs> you do keep your peas in your we'll, area. I don't we'll care. talk in January. Say we're yeah. getting on halfway through the season. He's thinking, well, he's got some. I mean, it's a bit Andre and Anna at Cameroon. This I feel interesting. Do you think interesting comparison? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think Robert Sanchez could work out really well for Chelsea, especially at that price. It doesn't seem unreasonable. No, for a goalkeeper who could be a goalkeeper in a top four team, only twenty five. Yes, yeah. a million, a million to get for better. every year. <laughs> but I, but also with Sanchez, I mean, he was usurped by Jason Steele, who, well, he was put in because Sanchez was taken out for a bit and yeah. Steele did a lot better than they thought. And, oh, okay, this guy listens to me and he's really, really good. Thought And uh, Robert Sanchez had a bit of a Cancelo about it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So uh, so there we are. Um, he, he didn't have as big a strop, though, as, uh, as what we're hearing from uh, Vicente Guaita, the Crystal Palace goalkeeper. Yet more goalkeeper news for you on the Football Ramble, everybody. Roy Hodgson has revealed that uh, Guaita has refused to play in Crystal Palace's pre-season matches after, as Roy said, um, he's become disenchanted with the club. Disenchanted. Lovely to hear an English manager use such a big word. What's more enchanting than a talking owl? <laughs> it is the very dictionary de- definition of what you would see in a kid's yeah. fantasy film from the 80s. Indeed it is. It is it is enchanting. You've got a talking owl, you've got a flying eagle. Yeah. What, how, what more do you What's want? More? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this, this, is, this is where you find the fantastic yeah. beasts. Um, I don't know. I <laughs> he, he, I think, I mean, lost, he lost his place to Sam Johnston and, uh, and, and he wants it back because he was the mm. number one there for a long time. He's 36 years old. Um, and he probably thinks, you know, his time in in top flight football is is coming towards the end. So he's not wanting to be the number two or even number three at the moment for crying out loud. Well, n- n- number number three, really, because he's refused to play. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or does he even have a number, Andy? <laughs> yeah. Exactly, do they strip exactly, the number exactly. from you? But he wants to go back to Getafe, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I think is there anything more idyllic than the? Uh, Satellite suburbs of Madrid I, to uh, close out your career? I should say not. I'm chanting. Yeah, well, I think uh, he, he, he might find it harder because he's refusing to play anything. So I'll force the remove. And Hodson, very old school in, a, in his approach, was saying, well, he signed a contract and you got to honour that contract. <laughs> and that's the end of that. I, th- I think the point that Hodgson was making is he signed a contract quite recently. An right. extension. So, so he, he, signed, he signed a contract extension in yeah. January. And then when he was left out for Sam Johnston in what can only be described as fair competition for actual <laughs> places in a football team. Yes. He's like, oh, well, I'm not having this. Right. right. Well, there we are. Oh, we, we thought he was Spironi. He's not Spironi. Ah, what a shame. Well, moving on from goalkeepers, but staying 
in London. Uh, Bayern Munich are expected to put in an improved offer for Harry Kane after their latest bid was rejected on Monday. It just goes on and on. It seems to be just Harry Kane is the only person who's sort of working on this move. Yeah. Like the club are just like going, oh, I mean, they keep on putting up the money, but Kane doesn't seem to want to go. So. Well, so you're <laughs> taking Luke Moore's uh, approach to this that he doesn't want oh, to go. Oh, never. Again. God, good God, no. Okay, so Please change not. your tune then. Please not. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, uh, uh, yeah, compl- uh, I completely agree. Do you think with, even with Kane's bored of it? He sounds quite bored of it to me. He's just a little bit like, look, can you guys just sort it out? If fine, I'll I'll send in Charlie. Um, and uh, and no, well, he hasn't sent in Charlie. Charlie's been dealing with Sketches, hasn't he? Yeah, they've got like a new football. Foot, they, is this the first Sketches football boot? So I, I, think I it is, yeah. So I never understand mm. why um, you know your Jamie Redknapps of this world of this world. Yeah, uh, there's only one Jamie Redknapps of this world. Of this way. world. There's a few Redknapps out there, but um, <laughs> they they are obviously um, he obviously advertises Sketches. But I always thought like sketches was like a kind of Britney Spears kind of shoe for was it forty year old Americans like slightly comfortable yeah, yeah yeah good on the old on the old for the for the, for the ball heels. of the foot and the heels yeah, yeah so I mean it just seems like a weird thing for Harry Kane to be doing yeah it's like you're you're not that old I'd expect like yeah I would expect that if you went down to the Palace training ground Roy Hodgson would be playing, wearing a pair of sketches football boots yeah, in yeah. The yes, training yes you yes. I mean not. The finest, one push of the puppies, finest centre push, push puppies with studs on. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Not like one of the finest centre forwards in world football. Yeah. But, then, but if they're designing it just for his foot, maybe mm-hmm. it'll be, you know, yeah. give him a new lease of life as he's uh, knocking them in. Well, as a lot of the memes on Twitter uh, have been <laughs> suggesting, maybe Harry said to Charlie, OK, look, I want you to stay away from Bayern Munich. <laughs> stay away from that conversation. But I could do with a new pair of boots. Go and get me a new deal. <laughs> he's thinking, oh, the Nikons look good, Adidas. <laughs> Sketches, lifetime, <laughs> lifetime subscription <laughs> lifetime or whatever, lifetime, to. yeah, uh, lifetime boot deal he's got. So you know, uh, yeah, get, get involved, everybody. The lifetime of his career or the lifetime of him? Yeah, that's a good question. That seems very lucrative for but a, again, for though, a if sketches, Charlie Kane deal. <laughs> if sketches are making shoes for perhaps the slightly older person, yeah. I was gonna, this deal looks weird now, but it's going to come into his own in ten years' time. <laughs> I like, how manufacturers, yeah, right, okay. I like how manufacturers won't make um, exclusive football boots for uh, women players, but they'll make some weird sketches <laughs> one for Harry Kane. he got fucking ACL in every fucking football match in I the am. women's league. Oh, but don't worry, we made some sketches soft shoes for Harry bloody Kane. Do you think when he's like 75 playing walking football, as it's advertised, yeah. everyone's a bit like, oh, I've only got in Harry Kane's walking around going, oh, I'm so, so <laughs> so Oh, hey, if only you had a lifetime deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. Well, uh, good news for Spurs, though, is that they've signed Mickey uh, van den Ven for an initial £34 million from Wolfsburg and Alejo uh, Vélez uh, from Rosario Central. Rosario Central, rather. Mm. So are they very much men with Ven? Well, I, d- I no. did think men of that Peep Show gag when I saw van der Ven and I thought, yeah. he's got it all there, hasn't he? <laughs> um, Andy, who the hell are these players? <laughs> well, Mickey van der Ven, I, I think, will be really good for Spurs. They've ended up overpaying for him because Daniel Levy, being thought of as that ultimate master of the transfer market, mm. what he will occasionally do is... SSPs. Wait a little bit, yes. Yeah. Wait a little bit too long. Right. Ooh. And um, what he did, if, if they'd have struck a bit earlier with Van der Ven, they would they would have got him for cheaper. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, Wolfsburg sold um, Felix Metcher to Dortmund for quite a lot of money. So all of a sudden, they could afford to play the long game with Spurs and charge him a little bit more money. Yes. Um, which is what happened here, and they've nope. they've they've ended up paying a lot more than I thought they would. Where does he play? Uh, centre centre and back, he's a left, left centre back. And he's left footed because and of... he's and he's quick, which I think is really important when you've got um, his partner throwing himself into mad tackles <laughs> left and right. But Big Ange wanted this, didn't he? This is a this is a very yes. much a Postacoglu signing. Yes, and and they need that now. Alejo uh, Vélez is is interesting because I've never seen him play. Oh. Tim Vickery obviously has a lot. And is a big Spurs sympathiser, and he is um, not sold on the wisdom of this. Right. Oh, say. I see. Yes. But Messi's from Rosario, Andy. <laughs> yeah. Does that not count for so, anything? So is Angel Di Maria. Yeah, another one. Yeah. Oh well, uh, he's, got, he's got lovely feminine oh, eyes. It, but, uh, <laughs> so if is, that's going to help, is, is is it fair to say Spurs love an odd Argentinian signing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> they do, don't they? So it's kind of going with the territory. Get yeah. off their backs. That, that, that was weird seeing La Celso come on at the weekend. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Me. Um, Peter. Newcastle Hello. United. They've been making moves, haven't they? 
They have oh. signed Southampton defender Tino Livramento in a deal worth up to £40 million. It was lovely to see someone mock up on Twitter because um, his name's Tino yeah. with that uh, warm, that, that Tino Asprea jacket he arrived in, remember? <laughs> the midwinter. Oh, in the snow. Yeah, so I'm Drinking a glass of red wine yeah. and coming on and absolutely <laughs> destroying Robbie Musto, I think it was. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, what do you think of this? I mean, Romento. I mean, they keep on saying the we, are, we have got Newcastle our hands United. kind of tied about um, how much money we can spend <laughs> from 40 million on a football league. That seems like a lot of money. But um, I mean, they need um, backup for, for, for that position. I just feel sorry for Emil Kraft. Like yeah. he's just he just can't get a. He said my my life will be made again if I get a game of football. Oh no! <laughs> and it's and it's like I you never, never envisaged. <laughs> Donny clinging onto the relics oh. of Team Bruce. Oh. <laughs> but it was. Um, but obviously they need uh, they need backup. Uh, because they, they they've just got so many um, uh, matches to play, and he obviously plays in a very very different way uh, to, to to the first choice. But yeah, really, really positive signing, and um, I think a lot of Southampton fans are absolutely gutted. Obviously, he spent most of last season um, mm-hmm. uh, injured, but uh, yeah, he's, he's still very young, and I guess the price reflects that. Play a bit of midfield as well. Mm. How about that? Eh? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Very highly rated youngster, Le- and his and his mum's Scottish, and his dad's Portuguese. Right there, you go. But he plays best for England for old England, yep. and that's the main thing, Andy. <laughs> I think you'll find. Um, yeah, well, they are going to need uh, a big squad, Newcastle United, because of all that football mm. that's going to be played this season. But everybody will need a big squad because of um, uh, the, the football that everyone's going to be playing because of the extended, you know, time on the pitch. Of course, yes. You talked about this on Monday. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne has been the latest player to criticise the new approach to added time. It's not like him. No, it's <laughs> not like him to be down <laughs> about something. <laughs> the ER of the Premier League. Do you think he is? <laughs> yeah, I think he's he he's can. a right old whinge bag. I love it. He can be, but he can Ooh. be also very. Uh, he, he's he's one extreme or the other. I love I love that he gets involved, but he just always he's always whinging about playing whales and stuff. Like he's always <laughs> he's always in a right old grump. Yeah, well, he said yesterday <laughs> that it doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. Make sense. Agree. He said we spoke to the Arsenal players and even the referees about it. They don't even want to do it. But I bet they did when they scored that 11th minute injury time equaliser. He said, um, uh, but it's the new rule and it's what it is. A game like today, even the first half with three minutes extra, you can only guess what's going to happen if you play a lower team who keep time wasting all the time. A lower team. A lower team. Oh, there's a dig. a lower team in the world, presumably. (laughs) You won the treble, mate. (laughs) It's it's like he's deliberately doing it to get on the jingles of Football Ramble Parlour games. Well, (laughs) indeed, yeah. I mean, he suggested that there could be up to 25 minutes of extra time in some games. I mean, I love football. I want more football. Yeah, I'm all for it. No, it, it (laughs) it is a strange one. And I know you talked about it on Monday. Um, have you changed your opinions? <laughs> <laughs> no. What do, think? I mean, what do you think, Andy? Because it... I... honestly, I, like, like because it's measured so imperfectly. Yes. As I was saying on Monday, mm. I think there's a limited point to it. Also, I remember the first time after the introduction of VAR going to a going to a match in Turkey mm. when they were having eight nine minutes at the end of each half and thinking. I, I don't really care about accuracy anymore. I yeah. just yeah. feel that life is too short for this. Oh, yeah. completely. That's why if, and my team has done on a regular basis, you find yourself playing in the championship, it's not actually that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Referee's decision's final. You get on with the game. Yeah. You know what time you're leaving the ground, et cetera, et cetera. But that's what, it does make, I mean, it's not like transport links have got, are getting any easier. No. And if you're a, a, a football fan, this does add on 10 minutes, say, a quarter of an hour here. Yeah. And you, if you're stuck down in Southampton for the night, you're going to find people stranded because you can't get back around your castle or Manchester or whatever. Yeah. It's, like, it's like the opposite of the 100 in cricket, isn't it? It is. Well, they took those 20 balls and innings off so kids I, could get in bed earlier. Right. Also, as well, if, if you score a goal in the 89th minute now, are you going to go, ah, it's more like the 79th minute? Yeah. It's like true. midway through you the second know, half. You, you don't know how mad to go, do you? <laughs> how late on in the game, you kind of, yes, we've got... I never do, Marcus, <laughs> yeah. but I do it anyway. That's true, yeah. We've scored an equaliser, but there's probably about 20 minutes left to play. We're playing Man City, <laughs> so it's not a smash and grab, is it? We ended up losing 5-1. I don't know. A week today, though, Manchester City are, are back in action playing Sevilla in the Super Cup. Yeah. Oh. yeah another match that nobody needs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh dear me right everybody let's leave Europe and let's go to the good old US of A little Lionel Messi update little he's, Lionel Messi he's updates. proven everybody yeah. wrong again <laughs> <laughs> he's scored in all four matches for Inter Miami so far seven goals in total 
Well, I mean, I think it's yeah, only fair gonna... that we talk about Inter Miami. Yeah. You know, I like that we're talking about Inter Miami because we've got an actual reason to talk about Inter Miami. What, what we didn't before? No, we really didn't, Marcus. How dare you? But, but you've got to keep this up. The best footballer in the world mm. is playing for Inter Miami. He is. So you've got to talk about Inter Miami every single week. And he's doing very well for them as well. Thanks to me, <laughs> we got in on the ground early. <laughs> we did. We did okay. yeah. People are jumping on the Inter Miami back. Oh, uh, Messi's there now. Oh, we were talking about them before they were popular. <laughs> before Marcus Miami... harvested loads of shares in Inter Miami Inc. <laughs> and now I'm when cashing were penny them in. stocks. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. You would not believe it. Yeah. Uh, he scored another lovely free kick. Uh, which was not, and his and his first goal was assisted by Jordi Alba. Yeah, I mean, come on, Andy Brassel, don't scoff at this. No one's scoffing. I think it's I think it's lovely. I think it's genuinely lovely to see Messi. What <laughs> could someone Messi scoring for Inter Miami? There's something beautiful about it. I don't know. He's gone and he's really involved. When you see Ronaldo playing in Saudi Arabia, just like yeah, whatever, mate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So you're saying Messi's even got a better crappy retirement plan? Are you calling MLS crappy? I'm not calling it crappy. You just, I think you just did, Andy. <laughs> Absolutely. He's, he's gone off him now. He's, yeah. he's, he's a championship man. Yeah. Well, he said, well, that's what he said last week. He said, he said, I want to watch more. He did say that. He did say that. Well, 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 I think when we do our next uh, Football Ramble tour of the US, like, much like Gaeta, he's going to bottle it. He's going to refuse <laughs> to join us. But oh, for, for... I can't get my visa. <laughs> <laughs> um, we did find out some strange news about Inter Miami co-owner David Beckham, though, last week. Um, ben Foster. He of uh, the Wrexham gang uh, revealed that Beckham used to stay up all night playing on uh, playing. Uh, do, do you play Lego or do you build I don't know. Lego? Yeah, you sort of build, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, give it his due respect. Come on. Yeah, if you see a load of chaps like building a conservatory, you don't go. Oh, they're playing conservatory, you know. Yeah. Um, well, uh, Beckham, yeah, used to stay up uh, all night uh, building Lego while away with England. I don't apparently. think it's really a big reveal. I mean, like a lot yeah. of a lot of footballers do Lego. Well, I think because you, you concentrate on it and you, and you forget uh, the pressures of the next day's game. Yeah. You know when you get sent, you know when you get like a box of Lego and it's for you know to build a Ferrari or whatever. Like I haven't had that for ages. Do you but, have uh, to like? Do you have to? Is there only enough pieces for the Ferrari, or can you, you know, take about and put on, a, on a spider the Lego, on it? On the Lego Creator ones, you can build like three different things. My right, okay, but, but okay. not not all at the same time. It's a bit like so colouring, though, you, isn't it? It's you, a bit like you build a dolphin and then you turn it into a wolf or whatever. Right. Okay. Oh, there you are. Yeah. I didn't know that. Maybe that's why it's so bloody expensive. <laughs> they are very expensive. Not, not if you're getting sent it. That's true. No. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I think Foster thought it was a big reveal, but it was kind of like, oh, okay, that's quite nice. Tonight, Andy, Wimbledon are in action. I shall be there. You'll be there. Against Coventry, of course, the 1987 and 1988 FA Cup winners playing each other. Bloody hell, that's Andy. So exciting. But people have a go at us for old, old references. <laughs> <laughs> we used to be relevant, kids. And so did they. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Thank you very much for listening to the Football Ramble, part of the Acast Creator Network. Now, Patreon subscribers, don't go anywhere because every don't Wednesday... Don't go anywhere. Don't go, <laughs> don't anywhere, go anywhere. Because every Wednesday we're bringing an extended Ramble episode just for you Patreon people. Um, so if you signed up, keep listening for more Ramble goodness and where we reveal all the secrets <laughs> and we libel everybody we can yeah. wave a stick at <laughs> if not though if you're not a patron subscriber you can be so go over to our patreon by hitting the link in the show notes or search patreon.com forward slash football ramble to subscribe for just five dollars a month also follow us on twitter tiktok youtube and instagram at football ramble and don't forget to subscribe on your podcast app lovely old job thank you very much Andy brassel thank you thank you pete donaldson goodbye everyone. thank you everybody see you soon Cheers for watching another fantastic clip from the Football Ramble podcast. Make sure you click like on this video and subscribe to the channel, which means you will not miss a single upload.